Hey guys, what up? Steven here. Going to do another breakdown on Justin Herbert. Uh, this is going to be available to everyone. Obviously, you know, you're watching this right now. Um, I wanted to do this breakdown to kind of revisit, you know, the draft narrative narratives surrounding Justin Herbert and, and not in a negative way, not to, you know, paint him as, you know, as a poor player in college because he's our guy now, right? Like we have moved on. I have admitted several times I was wrong about him. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll touch on those theories in a little bit. So uh, I wanted to highlight here how he has improved. Uh, so I have clips from the bad from college and the amazing that we've seen, the amazing development that we've seen as an NFL quarterback. So going to get into all of it, going to get into uh, his performance and some of his throws against Jacksonville as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I think this is going to be fun. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you guys to watch this breakdown. I can't wait. So let's talk about some of the things that just that were said about Justin Herbert by yours truly. You know, for me, my biggest concern of, from for him or of him, I guess, uh, coming out of college was first and foremost, his ability to handle pressure. So that was the first concern I had about him as a prospect. So keep that in mind. The second one that I had, the second concern I had was his ball placement was very inconsistent. You know, everybody likes to point towards completion percentage, but, you know, if you really go back and watch his tape, you know, you see him missing throws high. You see him throwing, you know, to the, to the feet of the receivers a bunch of times. The ball placement was inconsistent, which led me to believe that I didn't think that he could be a super accurate quarterback in the NFL. You know, the, it's one thing to have a high completion percentage. Uh, it's another thing to do it in the NFL and consistently be able to pump out, you know, high completion percentage numbers. So that was number two. Um, and everybody kind of talked about his ability on the run. I felt like that was his best attribute attribute coming out of college in, in terms of passing. Uh, but, you know, I didn't love that. You know, I didn't, you know, it wasn't like what we're seeing now, uh, which we'll get into. So uh, let's get into these plays at Oregon. You know, this game against Auburn was, was kind of, something that scouts didn't love. He didn't play fantastic in this game, uh, even though they almost won. So let's talk about some of these plays. And as I mentioned, my first concern was his ability under pressure. So this was something that we see, this is something that we see out of a lot of college quarterbacks, but in particular, we saw it a lot out of Justin. And it's just this overemphasis on your legs and your athleticism and not trusting your players and not trusting your teammates. You know, a key part of playing the quarterback position is elevating those around you, which is something that he's doing a fantastic job of right now with Jalen Guyton, Justin Jackson, Donald Parham, all these guys. But, you know, you have to take what the defense gives you and you have to be able to trust your guys to make plays. So on this particular play on second down and nine, he has the chance to give his guy an easy first down or he has the chance to gain an easy five yards to his running back. But because he's under pressure, he gets a little hurried and he makes a wrong decision to tuck this ball. Now he makes this decision to step up. That's great. We've seen Justin do that in the NFL, right? Look at his tight end out in the flat. He throws that ball to his tight end. That's a first down. Look at his running back now check down at the line of scrimmage. He throws it right there to the running back. So running back, it's an easy five yards. You get a third and short, you know, very manageable, right? Instead, you know, it's just this over-reliance on your own athleticism. You tuck it in and run, and instead you get three yards instead of at least five. And that might seem, you know, like a minuscule thing, but they ended up kicking a field goal on this one. Uh, so obviously did not work out. Next one I'm going to talk about. This is more of a technical standpoint. You see how he did that little hop right there? I'm going to go back really quick. So you can tell when a quarterback doesn't like being under pressure when their mechanics are off. And so when he does this little hop step, that to me shows that he wasn't comfortable. He wasn't, he wasn't feeling, maybe it was just that day. Maybe it was, you know, mechanics, maybe it was a coaching thing, but in this instance, he did not feel comfortable to make an accurate throw. So we'll watch this again, watch his little hop step that he does right here. Instead of just stepping up, you know, it's a very subtle thing. But because he wasn't comfortable under pressure, you know, he makes a very inaccurate throw. And again, that was one of my concerns coming out of college. Obviously, he had a great offensive line at Oregon and, you know, being under pressure was going to happen much more in the NFL. 
uh, than it did at Oregon. And obviously we have seen that pan out now. So fast forward, right? <laughs> you know, a whole year fast forward, right? And Pep Hamilton and Shane Steichen have done a wonderful job. And, you know, we've seen Justin Herbert really go into a 360 into the opposite direction of handling pressure. And Daniel Popper talked about this on the Chargers podcast network. He has now turned his biggest weakness from college handling pressure into his biggest strength in the NFL. Now think about that. Think about how rare that is. You know, Patrick Mahomes, we all knew about his arm talent. You know, the, the accuracy is debatable if that's become his you know, that was the knock on him coming out of college was his, you know, lack of accuracy. And, you know, I don't want to say he's not an accurate quarterback, but he hasn't turned it into his biggest strength. His biggest strength is still his arm talent. It's still his arm strength and his ability to make off platform throws. So turning your biggest weakness like Justin Herbert into your biggest strength is so rare. And I hope everyone takes this and appreciates it for what it is. Now, if you're a Patreon supporter, shout out there. Obviously, selfish plug. <laughs> um, if you do not support us on Patreon, please go and do so. We do really appreciate the support. Um, you've seen me talk about this play on Patreon, and I want to bring it up here. You know, hopefully more people are watching it. This is the touchdown throw to Keenan Allen, and this touchdown is absurd. So he gets under pressure from Trey Pipkins to the right side. Brian Burns comes off the edge. In college, Justin Herbert runs this play. You know, I just showed you that first play. He either runs it or he makes an inaccurate throw. And look how much space he has to the right. It's very reasonable. You know, you run this play, no harm, no foul, right? You probably gain 5, 10 yards right there. You know, maybe the, the Panthers are able to come up. But his eyes stayed downfield the entire time. And if you watch this on Patreon, you, you saw me talk about it. Um, Keenan Allen's going to come over the middle. And uh, I forget his name, Shaq Thompson his numbers are going to turn towards Justin. And as soon as he sees that, he's just going to uncork this pass and drop a dime to Keenan Allen for the touchdown. Now, again, my main concerns, under pressure and ball placement. Both of those on display right here, perfect, perfect ball placement to Keenan Allen, only in a spot where he can catch it and no one else. And the under pressure pocket management is fantastic. Let's watch this again, full full speed for you guys so he gets the pressure off of the edge takes a slow a subtle step up you know one step and just uncorks it to keenan allen this was from sunday so you know uh i do want to talk about this but we something we've seen out of patrick mahomes is just a subtle you know back pedal and then you know he kind of just lofts it up and it's not something super common like we you know we don't see it out of many quarterbacks but justin herbert did it on Sunday. He has pressure. He has a free blitz right now. Look at number 56 right in his face. And Keenan's not open right now. Hunter Henry's not open right now. And look at him just, you know, it's just so subtle back pedal and then throw it to Keenan once he finally is able to get open. Again, biggest weakness into a strength. You know, that's an attribute of an elite quarterback. So, a lot of fun today, guys. I'm, I'm super hyped up. My heart's pumping. <laughs> I love this, man. I haven't even gotten to the good stuff yet uh, from Sunday's game. But, you know, this is just – he's comfortable now under pressure. And, you know, all the credit in the world goes to Pep Hamilton specifically and Shane Steichen for designing this offense around Justin's best attributes. But, man, this, this was just – it's been so much fun and so exciting to see him do this, right? And – turn his biggest weakness into a strength is just fantastic. Now, ball placement, that was the other concern that I had, remember? And a lot of ball placement is throwing with anticipation. You know, something that Philip Rivers was so good at, right? It was throwing people open and throwing before they were even, you know, out of their breaks. And, you know, he did it so many times that obviously that's why he's the Hall of Fame player that he is. In college, you don't really see a lot of that. And that you didn't see a lot of that with Justin Herbert. You know, he had the tendency to try and wait until they were open to throw it. And, and that's a problem in the NFL. It's kind of a problem when you're playing a team like Cal. Cal has a great defense, right? They had Ashton Davis on this team who's an NFL player. They've got a few others this year. You have to throw with anticipation. And, and you know, we didn't see a whole lot of that out of Justin Herbert in college. And this is a perfect example. You know, this guy, this receiver that he has, I wish you could get the all 22. But, you know, when I pause it right here, 
he's open and he's open for a while. But Justin, maybe it's this is by design. I don't know. I'm not an Oregon coach. Uh, but he does not throw this receiver open. He waits until the receiver is open. And that's a big difference. And because he waits, you know, he hangs his guy out to dry and ultimately is an incomplete pass. Now, you've also heard me talk about this play if you're on Patreon, but I'm going to bring it up again because it's so good. And it's just an insane play for a quarterback to make, especially a rookie quarterback. And again, strength to weakness, right? <laughs> he gets a free rusher basically from Tapa Sogman or however you say his name. Hunter Henry gets a late start on this play. This is a fake zero blitz that the Chiefs back out of. And he's going to throw this ball to Keenan Allen. So he's under pressure and he throws Keenan Allen open. He throws with anticipation. You know, he's going to release this ball when Keenan Allen is at the right hash and Keenan Allen is going to catch it on the opposite side of the other hash. That is anticipation. You know, he's already released that ball. Just a great throw, great ball placement from Justin Herbert to Keenan Allen. A lot of these plays are to Keenan Allen, as you can imagine, because he has like 40 catches right now. So again, live for you guys. Look when he releases the ball, he leads Keenan Allen perfectly. This was a third down conversion. You know, Justin Herbert has been so good on third downs and he's been so good under pressure. And, you know, it's just been so much fun to watch. So the other thing, everybody talked about his super strong arm. But what we didn't see out of him with his super strong arm was accuracy downfield. It just didn't happen very much. And again, whether that's coaching, I don't know. You know, I'm not really feeling the love for the Oregon coaching staff at this point, you know, knowing what we know about Justin Herbert right now. But, you know, he, this is an overthrow that just shouldn't happen for a guy, you know, that we as Chargers fans have grown accustomed to seeing these great deep passes, one of which you'll see later on. And it's just a bad throw. And this happened all the time at Oregon. And, you know, I, which I'll get into a little bit, but before I get to the Jacksonville plays, uh, you know, fully this play from him to Keenan Allen is absurd. And, you know, again, he's throwing with anticipation. The deep ball is perfect. The deep ball touch is perfect, which is something that, you know, a certain old podcast host of, of mine, <laughs> you know, kind of praised Jordan Love for where was that his deep ball touch was much better than Justin Herbert's, at least coming out of college. And, you know, I don't know how much that is true. I'm not the biggest Jordan Love guy, but that's kind of beside the point. But I love this play so much from Justin Herbert because you'll see him point out to Keenan Allen and Keenan Allen will take a step up. So the, you know, nonverbal communication there, which is something that you don't see out of many young quarterbacks, He's telling Keenan Allen what to run. You know, the the um, the Jaguars in cover one at this point. They're in man coverage across the board, and then they have a deep high safety. So he's looking at Keenan Allen, and he's looking at all this space to the left, and, he's, you know, like, and goes, you know what? I'm going to tell Keenan Allen to run a slot fade, and it's going to be a perfect throw, and it's going to turn into a back shoulder fade. And uh, I wish I could show that back angle. I, I only chose this one, but. Uh, he's going to make a perfect throw. And something that you can't see right here is his eyes. You know, he's going to look to the right just for a little second. And he's going to hold that safety in the middle just enough, uh, just for enough time so that Keenan Allen can get open. Well, not open, obviously, but, <laughs> you know, that the safety doesn't have enough space to come and make the play. And this throw to him and Keenan Allen, you know, when you have a good relationship with a receiver, when you can execute back shoulder fades like this. And considering that he didn't have any reps with Keenan Allen until, you know, three weeks ago, <laughs> this is just absurd, man. And I, I've just loved seeing the way that he trusts Keenan Allen. You know, both of the plays that I've shown so far are to Keenan, and it's just been so much fun to watch. So, again, the last thing that I want to talk about with Justin in this point is that there was – you know, a lot of praise heaped upon him for his ability to throw off platform. Right. But even then the accuracy was not always there. And that was, you know, everybody was kind of praising him and maybe this was me kind of being a little, you know, negative Nelly, so to speak. But, you know, I, I would see plays like this one and I would just, you know, I, I was a little uh, disappointed in seeing someone who's praised so 
you know, so is so overly praised for something. And then you see this kind of play. And so hopefully, you know, again, I don't want to paint him in the negative light right now because I've been so excited to be wrong <laughs> about Justin Herbert. And uh, this play just kind of shows how much more he's improved and even just a little thing like throwing on the run. And you can just tell he's a little more comfortable. The mechanics are, are much more crisp and he makes a great throw here to KJ Hill on the run. And we've seen him do this, you know, several times and I wish they would do it more because he's so good at it. So now, Okay, so that is why I think that Justin Herbert has transformed, right? Because he's taken all of his weaknesses and in five games, really in four games, he has squashed all doubts from me and from everybody else. You know, I wish other people would be as vocally, uh, you know, uh, be vocally expressing their uh, wrongness like I have, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm looking at UPFF. Anyway, so... I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of, of Oregon's offense, and I don't think that it fit Justin Herbert. And I think that much is clear. And I think that is why we're seeing him kind of break out of his shell with the Chargers because they have taken, you know, they had this imagination to look at someone who threw a screen pass on 35% of his passes and be able to build a game plan around his strengths and be able to uncover his strengths. So, you know, shout out to Pep Hamilton, shout out to Shane Steichen. They've done a fantastic job. So a couple of weeks ago, right, we saw Justin and the Chargers go down to Tampa Bay. And he had these two bombs. And then he did it again in New Orleans, right? And so I'm thinking to myself over the bye week, you know, we're going to start seeing defenses really, you know, give him the Mahomes treatment and, and keep everything in front of them. And then Buccaneers did that in game Buccaneers in the fourth quarter and, and late th third quarter after the Jalen Guyton touchdown, you know what, we're, we're going to send three, four people back. And so Justin is going to have to, I was thinking to myself that Justin's going to have to learn how to take what the defense gives him and check it down underneath. And then like, that's the next step this season. And then I was thinking to myself, well, the next step after that is being able to manipulate the defense with his eyes and with his tails and being able to, you know, really take that next step. And Pat, that's something Patrick Mahomes talked about uh, last off season was that he didn't really learn how to manipulate and, and read defenses until his second year in the NFL. So I'm sitting there to myself thinking like, okay, maybe we'll see this down the road that Justin's going to start taking what the defense gives him being, you know, more active in the check downs. And then maybe next year we'll see some manipulation, but no, <laughs> this guy in start number five, after not being the starter all off season, comes out against Jacksonville and with his eyes is manipulating the defense and he's taking what the defense gives him. He's not forcing things deep. He's taking the running backs and he's checking down to Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson. And it's just every single week, it's something new with Justin Herbert, right? Like every single week we see him take a little step and a little step and a little step on Sunday. He took a massive leap forward and he carried the Chargers to a victory on this hashtag victory Monday. And I'm so excited because of that. And I'm going to get into it. This is the first play of the game. The very first play of the game, we see this, right? Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Look at his eyes. I, I picked this angle so you could see his eyes. He knows that this play is designed to, look at, to go to Hunter Henry. And look, there's three guys around Hunter Henry. So what's he going to do? He manipulates the defense with his eyes, and he checks it down to Joshua, or not Joshua, to Justin Jackson, makes an easy pass. Ball placement's not great there, but hey, you know, baby steps. And he gets eight yards on first down after being pinned deep by a great punt by the opposing team. So one more time, look at his eyes first and foremost. He's going to look deep towards Hunter Henry. And I think Mike Williams is on the other side coming down deep as well. And then he says, you know what? I don't like this play. I'm going to move off to it. I'm going to make an easy throw to my running back. Get him in space. Get him an easy first down. First play of the game. Love it. Fantastic. Okay, next one right here, again with his eyes. So the arm strength right here, man, to fit this ball into this window, see if I can highlight it right here. 
look how small of a window this is that he just says, you know what, this is me being better than you. And I'm just going to fit this in. But again, look at his eyes. He's looking downfield first. You know, he's keeping his peripherals, you know, as open as possible. And so in case he needs to come off of Keenan Allen and move somewhere else, he can, you know, that's a smart, that's smart technique. It's good technique. The mechanics are sound. And then he just uncorks it. So just a, a, a great play, you know, great arm strength by him. Now, again, this, this was a fantastic play by him. Something that I showed earlier in this, this film breakdown is that he in college would have ran this ball, right? You know, he, he makes the good decision to roll out of the pocket, but look at his eyes the entire time are downfield the entire time. And instead of running this, he could have ran this for as many yards as, you know, Joshua Kelly got, but just taking what the defense gives you, not putting your body at risk too much, which is kind of why I have an, I have an issue with what Anthony Lynn was saying about not putting Herbert at risk. I think he does a fine job of that on his own, you know, because he's so smart and, you know, this is just an underrated play. It gets Joshua Kelly going, it gets the team going, it gets a first down. And, you know, he could have easily ran this for his own first down, but just, you know, the, the subtle check down to Joshua Kelly it is such a smart play by Justin Herbert. Okay, so this is the fade. I actually did put this one in twice. Okay, so I did want to talk about this. I, I didn't remember if I had this one twice or not. But this is the back view. This is where you can see his eyes, right? His eyes right now are straight at the goalpost. And that is crucial when you're throwing to the opposite sideline because his eyes right now are holding the safety deep. And again, you know, he's manipulating this defense. He knows he's going to Keenan Allen. But if he catches that ball and immediately looks to Keenan Allen and is waiting for Keenan Allen, waiting for Keenan Allen, then that safety can come over the top and possibly make an interception. So the fact that he is able to hold this safety deep with his eyes and then come back to Keenan Allen on the opposite corner, that is so, so good. That's a veteran type throw. The nonverbal communication, the holding the safety with the eyes, and then you throw it as a back shoulder fade. That's some Aaron Rodgers type stuff. I said that. Yeah. I said what I said. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hopefully you guys are learning a lot from this, man. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. So next one here, this, you know, I just love this kid, man. And, and being able to see what he is making his progress and seeing able what, and being able to see how far he has come has just been so much to fun. The chargers honor national tight end in a big way. They had all three tight ends on this play. Virgil Green motioned out wide. Donald Parham was on the right. Hunter Henry on the left. And they did four verts. Mike Williams was out wide, so he's not a tight end, but kind of is, I guess. Anyways, so this play was designed to go to Donald Parham, according to Anthony Lynn. And again, you look at his eyes. He's holding the safety over the top with his eyes. You know, this is not something we saw at Oregon. This is not something we see out of young quarterbacks. If you watch guys like Drew Locke, you watch Sam Darnold, you watch – even Josh Allen, you don't see this manipulation with his eyes and with his frame and with his technique and everything is so good, right? And this is just fantastic. And then on top on and then on top of everything else, he just makes a perfect, perfect throw. Where he threw it to Donald Parham, Chicken Parham, shout out to him, efficiency king. This is the only spot that you can throw this ball. And if he throws it any higher, if he throws it any deeper, if he throws it any shorter. It's probably an incomplete pass. So seeing this ball placement out of Justin Herbert and every single week it's consistent. And that's, that's the thing is I keep waiting for him to have a bad game with ball placement or have a bad game with accuracy or, or, you know, whatever the case may be, but he just hasn't. And I'm fully confident that I I don't know if he'll hit a rookie wall. He might have a bad game in terms of, you know, maybe the, the other team kind of, you know, gets on a roll on offense and he doesn't get in a rhythm, but and this, this ball placement is so consistently good that I, I'm extremely confident that he's going to be able to keep up this pace. So another instance in which he is taking what the defense gives him. He wants to throw with anticipation to Keenan Allen on this play. This play is designed to go to Keenan Allen. And you can see that looking at where he's faking that, right? He faked that right to Keenan Allen, expecting Keenan to be open. He didn't like what he saw, so he pulled it back. And then he's going to throw it to Jalen Guyton over the middle, who he trusts a lot. And Jalen Guyton has improved quite a lot this offseason as well. 
and the ball placement. There's three guys right around Jalen Guyton. You know, he's protecting Guyton with this ball placement. And, you know, he leaves it short. And so that he's not at risk for a big hit or anything like that. He's protecting the football, making a smart decision, not forcing it to Keenan Allen when he didn't have to, which is what a lot of young quarterbacks do with their number one targets. And Justin's kind of guilty of that at times. You know, uh, he's not perfect, but he's pretty freaking close. So just to see this kind of, it's a subtle thing again. You know, it's a subtle way that he has improved just within this season. And again, fantastic ball placement. Pocket around him is not perfect. He wasn't under pressure necessarily, but, you know, it's just a very smart play. So then this beauty comes, man. (laughs) He's so good at the deep ball. He might be the best deep ball thrower behind Patrick Mahomes right now. Uh, Actually, I take that back. Russell Wilson is the best. Patrick Mahomes second. Maybe Justin Herbert third. We'll kind of see how this plays out for the rest of the year. But so I'm going to play this back. I'm going to play this all the way through first, and then I'm going to go back to it. Um, Again, under pressure slightly. So, you know, key in on that again. Um, Don't have to see that because obviously we know he scores. But I want you to focus on where he throws this ball from and where Jalen Guyton is and then where the ball ends up because this is – it's just beautiful. There's no other way to say it. It's beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to pause it right there. He has officially, you know, released this ball, right? You know, he's in that motion. Jalen Guyton is at the 38, the LA 38. Okay, so he's going to, you know, release this ball. And then where he catches it is the other 38. So that ball travels. Well, it travels more yards, obviously. But he leads Jalen Guyton for 20 yards down the field and then drops it right in the bread basket. Just, you know, perfect, perfect pass. And I showed you a deep ball earlier in this clip, right? That it was, we didn't see that at Oregon. You know, the leading the receiver, dropping it right in the bread basket. This is just a perfect throw. And so I mentioned, like, we're going to start seeing defenses keying on the deep pass. Like, they're eventually going to learn that Jalen Guyton is almost exclusively like a deep threat. And so what does he do later on in the game? You know, this is right before he had the rushing touchdown, this next play I'm going to show. Uh, this is good, like really freaking good. So he has Mike Williams on the right. And I believe that's Keenan out on the right. And the Jaguars are going to have, drop four guys essentially to this, uh, to the right side, their left side of the defense. And then Joshua Kelly is going to leak out right. So the deep safety is obviously Keenan over here. And then you have the two linebackers, the slot safety and the cornerback all over here. So Justin is reading what is happening right here, and he's not liking what he sees. In previous weeks, he probably throws throws his ball away, which we saw him do earlier in the half. Maybe he forces something to Mike Williams. Who knows? He probably could make a good throw. But he takes what the defense gives him. He gives the ball to his good playmaker, Joshua Kelly, and he gets the ball to him in space and lets him go make a play and almost gets a first down. That was on first down, so they ended up scoring you know, a couple plays later. And I'll set again one more time for you guys. Oops, a little too far. Sorry about that. So he takes what the defense gives him. He doesn't see what – he doesn't like what he sees deep. He, he, you know, he sees four Jaguars and two Chargers. You know, Obviously, he's a biology major. He's super smart, can do math, doesn't like that math. And Joshua Kelly, easy pitch and catch for an easy gain on first down. Oh man, lots to unpack about Justin Herbert today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I am loving what I am seeing out of this quarterback. Obviously the physical upside has always been there. You know, we always knew that he could turn into something great down the road because of his physical attributes, because of his rocket arm. But man, he is leaps and bounds as he is leaps and bounds better than what he was in college and credit to Pep Hamilton credit to Shane Steichen and Anthony Lynn, who much of you guys don't like, Uh, you know, he deserves at least some credit for this as well. It's just been so much fun to watch him grow and I've never been happier to be wrong. I'm going to emphasize right now. I was wrong about Justin Herbert. I'm sorry. 
but it happens. It happens to everyone. You know, even, you know, guys like Jordan Reed and Scott Miller, uh, they make mistakes too. And this is me, you know, I'm learning. This is my first year doing this, that kind of thing. Um, but man, it's just been so much fun to watch him grow and, and watch him improve. And he's already learning how to manipulate defenses right now. That is scary. If you learned something, please leave a comment, like the show, uh, like the, the video, excuse me, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter if you're not at GEC Podcast 17. Like I said, we're on Patreon as well. And any support, any feedback you guys have is always welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.